Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless actress patty lupone visiting the hens on the view where she was asked about ron DeSantis. the santas and the lgbtq well that's extremely upsetting yeah that is extremely upsetting yeah. these are human beings yeah and I could cry. They're not harming anybody. No, no. I don't know why he's doing this. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, and I've said this before, and I'm going to get in trouble. But I have said this before, and it's been in print. I don't know what the difference between our Christian right and the Taliban is. I have no idea what the difference is. You're not the only person who's said that. Mm. I don't, I, I, I just don't know what the difference is. Yeah. What's happening in this country right now in the name of religion is so dangerous. Yeah. The evil we are seeing today isn't Republican versus Democrat, right versus left. It's good versus evil. There are only two groups of people in this world, the saved and the unsaved. Here's a question everyone needs to answer. Whether you are a Democrat, Republican, or not affiliated with either party, do you love Jesus? Many professing Christians say they love Jesus, but in all actuality, they hate him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many who profess to be Christ followers are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and pro-transgender. They are defiant to the laws of God, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. How then can these people claim they love Jesus when he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus declares, They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, as we read in Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For those who say Jesus never said anything about abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism being a sin. The Bible tells us all scripture is inspired by God as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture has plenty of negative things to say about killing the innocent and homosexuality. It's called lawlessness. Many professing Christians justify sin by using Christ's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself means telling them the truth in love, not by condoning their sin. The good news is, God will forgive all sin, as we read in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said, as a sign of His coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. 
We are going to begin with the news this morning, and that is the latest outbreak in a deadly 2023 tornado season. A wave of severe storms hammered Oklahoma, Kansas, and Iowa last night, and people in central Oklahoma reported several tornadoes leading to severe damage. You see it on your screen now. One of them is blamed for killing two people in Cole, Oklahoma, a little town 25 miles south of Oklahoma City. As Janet Shaleman shows us, survivors say the power of that twister in particular was terrifying. It looked like a bomb went off. It was a devastation. Dennis and Michelle Newberg, in their words, say their home was wiped off the face of the map, escaping just five minutes before a tornado destroyed their house in Cole, Oklahoma. The tornado that plowed through the community with a population of about 600 decimated houses and property and claimed at least two lives. It is reasonable to expect possibly more based on the damage that we've seen thus far. The tornado warning started early Wednesday evening. It is deathly violent and it is getting bigger. First, large hailstones pelted the area just outside Oklahoma City. Previewing what was to come. It's on the ground. About 60 miles east of Cole, another tornado touched down in Shawnee. Our affiliate station KWTV in Oklahoma City caught it live on air just as the town's power went out. Oh, look at that. That storm took aim at Oklahoma Baptist University, shredding walls of buildings and leaving a trail of debris on campus. No injuries are reported. My immediate reaction can be like, holy crap. You know, because like there was a huge tree overturned. Like there was glass that was like stained glass. Beautiful, it was shattered. This morning, a path of destruction near Oklahoma City. We were able to see kind of where the path of the storm is. After multiple reported tornadoes, this new video showing the damage in hard hit Shawnee, Oklahoma. You can see this is the Lowe's hardware store right over here. And it looks like some of the roof uh, took a lot of damage from the storm. I can see a lot of the roofing out into the parking lot area. There's also a hole in it. At least two deaths are blamed on the storms in McLean County, where overnight authorities said they were rescuing people trapped in their underground shelters. There are hundreds and hundreds of first responders and other equipment going in uh, to, to search these different residences, these different shelters uh, that they have on these properties to make sure that everyone made it out okay. Massive hail, three inches in diameter. Oh! Oh! Smashing this windshield and the damaging winds leveling these homes in Norman, Oklahoma. About 15 miles away, meteorologist Reed Timmer capturing this tornado moving through the town of Cole. See it? Those are multiple vortices. Look out. Turning to the war in Ukraine, the country's armed forces are getting more weapons from the West as they prepare for a counteroffensive that's expected this spring. Holly Williams is in Ukraine getting a rare look at the armed forces that are getting ready to take on the Russian troops. Ukraine says it's taken delivery of a long-awaited Patriot air defense system. That's U.S. technology that can shoot down aircraft and missiles. But we've been meeting with some Ukrainian soldiers that are still hoping for new American weapons. Through dense forest in eastern Ukraine, down muddy tracks, we were taken to see something hidden amongst the trees. An entire battalion of Ukraine's 3rd Tank Brigade, known as the Iron Brigade. Their machines are well camouflaged, so they can't be spotted by Russian drones. This one's a 1980s era tank. It's pretty old technology. They're not state-of-the-art. These are all Soviet-made tanks more than three decades old. But they allow the Ukrainians to penetrate deep into territory occupied by Russia. You can hit something 12 kilometres, that's eight miles away. Vladimir is a tank commander who told us he used to serve in the Soviet army alongside Russian comrades back when Ukraine was part of the USSR. Now the Russians are his enemy. Ukraine's new friends, the US and its European allies, are sending more capable modern tanks, including 31 Abrams from America expected later this year. Ukraine's government calls tanks the punching fist of democracy. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, 
Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Hopes of a truce in Sudan have once again come and gone. Fighting continues in the capital, despite the ceasefire that was announced by both the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. The 24-hour truce was meant to kick in at 6pm local time on Wednesday, but sounds of explosions and gunfire quickly dashed any hopes of a break in the fighting. Residents in Khartoum are growing increasingly desperate, some even braving the streets to stock up on water and other basic essentials. It's a big water problem. People are suffering a lot. People can't even find mineral water to buy from the shops. The Sudanese army and the RSF paramilitary group have been battling around the main military headquarters in the city centre, as well as the nearby airport. Thousands of residents have fled the country as a result, while others stay barricaded in their homes, threatened by raids. Doctors in Sudan say nine hospitals have been hit by artillery in the capital and 16 have had to be evacuated. The fighting, which erupted over the weekend, opposes the National Army, loyal to General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, to the RSF paramilitary group, led by his former ally, General Mohamed Hamdam Dagalo, more commonly known as Hamedti. The UN Health Agency says close to 300 people have been killed, but with uncollected bodies piling up in the streets, that toll could be much higher. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. And we have new information this morning. Uh, Mexican authorities are looking for the group of men who opened fire at a resort, killing seven people, including a child. The shooting took place at the La Palma Resort in central Mexico. And police say after the shooting, the attackers then destroyed a spa shop and took a security camera before fleeing. There's no word on the possible motive at this time, but videos posted to social media show several vacationers running for cover. They are the things that happen all the time. A mixed up address, pulling into the wrong driveway or confusing one car from another. Yet remarkably, for a third time in a week, seemingly innocent moments of confusion have led to bloodshed. From Kansas City, where a teen who approached the wrong doorstep is recovering from two bullet wounds. To New York State, where a 20-year-old woman was fatally shot after the car she was in accidentally drove up the wrong driveway. And now in Elgin, Texas, a high school cheerleader has been shot and seriously wounded after her friend apparently approached the wrong car. A string of tragedies unconnected. In all three cases, the alleged shooters have been arrested and face charges. Morgan Chesky has the latest. Three shootings in one week. Missouri, New York, and tonight, Elgin, Texas. All tied to seemingly innocent mistakes. Approaching the wrong car or home. I'm Peyton Washington on Woodlands Elite Generals. High school cheerleader Peyton Washington, the latest victim. After a stranger opened fire on her and three friends in the parking lot of a grocery store outside Austin. It was unfortunate these girls were um, just trying to get home. The girls traveling home from a late night practice to where they had all parked their cars. After one of the teens mistakenly approached the wrong vehicle, police say a man began shooting multiple times. The guy got out and they saw that he had a gun and so they tried to speed off and he shot his gun like five times or so. Police arresting Pedro Telo Rodriguez Jr. charged with deadly conduct, a third degree felony as Washington remains in the ICU. The latest shooting comes days after a Kansas City teen was shot in the head after going to the wrong home to pick up his younger brothers. The 84-year-old suspect pleading not guilty today to first-degree assault and armed criminal action and was released on $200,000 bond. His family releasing this new photo, calling him a walking miracle. 
adding had the bullet hit his head a fraction of an inch in any other direction, he would probably be dead. Meanwhile, tonight in upstate New York, Kevin Monahan pleading not guilty to murder and remanded into jail without bail. Monahan's accused of fatally shooting 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis. She was in a car that accidentally pulled into his driveway, looking for a friend's house. Police say the suspect fired two shots from his front porch, killing Gillis. For this man to sit on his porch and fire at a car with no threat is just, it just angers me so badly. Tonight, communities grieving after common mistakes ended with violence in three separate shootings. Three motorcyclists murdered Friday along I-45 in two separate incidents in two separate counties. The victims, all men, were affiliated with a motorcycle gang, according to police sources, and appear to have been shot and killed while they were riding by members of an opposing gang. It happened in Montgomery County first around 11 a.m. We have one 32-year-old white male who was shot. He is a member of an outlaw motorcycle gang. It's unclear if that man was shot on the highway or the feeder, but he managed to call 911 himself after being shot in the back while riding a motorcycle. And then it happened again. We're also aware that there is another incident in Walker County involving fatalities. In Walker County near Huntsville on I-45 northbound again, main lanes, two men. 69 and 43 years old, shot while riding and pronounced dead at the scene. Another motorcyclist, 61 years old in that group, was airlifted to Memorial Hermann Med Center. At last check, he's still alive. All of the violence apparently between two rival motorcycle gangs and their problems spilling out Friday in a very public way. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. There are some scary moments for a Connecticut homeowner. Look at this. He had to fight off four would-be carjackers in his driveway. And get this. They're trying to steal his car right in front of his house in broad daylight. The guys who were trying to steal the homeowner's car were kicking and punching him, but he would not back down. You can see the homeowner race out into his driveway and yank one of the would-be thieves from his red infinity, and then the two start trading blows. This incident was caught on the homeowner surveillance camera on April 10th, just after 7 o'clock at night in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. That's about 10 miles south of Hartford. Police shared this video in an attempt to identify the suspects. Three other guys join the suspect. One of them kicks the homeowner in the head. One of them jumps on his back. One guy starts to even beat him with his shoe. But that homeowner was like, not today, sir. He just kept on fighting. Eventually, a woman yells she's going to call the police, and that's when these guys take off. I'm going to the cop! Go ahead! 24-year-old substitute teacher Natalie Garcia was arrested Monday, charged with four counts of child endangerment, after this video came to light. You can see these are 12- and 13-year-olds at Kimbrough Middle School in Mesquite, Texas whose faces have been blurred because they're minors, appear to be fighting each other at the encouragement of their substitute teacher. The incident was caught on a cell phone video obtained by NBC Dallas. 
The mother of the student who filmed this video says she was shocked at what she saw. I was devastated. I was like, I couldn't watch the full video. I had to stop it multiple times because I didn't think it was real. I said, this must be a prank. This, this is not real. According to Martinez, her daughter told her Garcia pushed desks aside to create a space for the students to fight each other, with some leaving the classroom bleeding. I do not want this on record. The school district confirmed the teacher encouraged the fighting and told a student to keep watch at the door while fights took place. Who in their right mind? Because I trust my child to go to school, but I also trust the staff to keep my kids safe. Martinez says her daughter is now getting threats from other students for reporting it, something she says is also unacceptable. I know my daughter. I know that she's a sweet She's a sweet girl, and to, to know that she's, she's getting death threats, I would, I hate that. An argument between a couple led to this wild scene at a Chicago area gas station. Forest Park, Illinois police tell Inside Edition Digital, 31-year-old Kendra Nance had been arguing with her boyfriend inside this truck when they pulled into a gas station because they were having car trouble. Some customers stepped in and that's when Nance began yelling at them too. Someone threw something at Nance's truck. At that point, her boyfriend got out of the vehicle. That's when she hopped into the driver's seat and kept arguing with the other customers. Nance then drove her truck right into the vehicle of the person with whom she was arguing, dragging her boyfriend along the way, speeding off and flipping the truck over barely a block away. Damn, damn, damn. She got right out. Through all of this, Nance's boyfriend was still arguing at the gas station. Both tried running away, cops caught up with them. That's an awfully nice house you've got there. It'd be a real shame if something happened to it, like a flood or a fire or a group of angry squatters who move in while you're away for a few days or a week. That last one is happening all across America. A squatter sees an empty house, breaks in and makes it their own. And they're ruining the actual homeowners' lives. It doesn't matter if you own the home, it belongs to the squatter now, sorry. And don't expect help from the authorities. Most states have laws on the books that protect the rights of the squatter, not you, the one who pays the mortgage. And by the, by the time you go through the court system, the squatters are already wreaking havoc and living on your dime. Like in Jacksonville, where squatters moved in and caused nearly $40,000 in damages, bashing holes in the walls, ripping doors off hinges, and even throwing feces on the carpets. So when the cops can't help you, you have to confront the squatters. And that can get heated. I own this house. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. We're all going As a through this We're all going through this stress. Like we just spent 31,000. 31,000. 31. And we got 3,100. Okay, spent. it doesn't matter. <laughs> Your police report states this is under investigation. So with that being said, we don't have to leave anything until the police comes back and tell us what would be the I have every decision. right to be in this you, house. You don't have every right to be in the house at, at all, ma'am. You do not. And sometimes it can get physical. Whatever the case may be. I own the house. But yeah. Okay. No, no. <laughs> if you touch no, me. I'm not it. touching you. My I'm trying you to are it. touching no, me. Not. And this okay. lady is I'm touching me. I'm not going blocking you from no, in the house. You are. God And then you need to take things outside. Why did you, why, why did you break the window? Bitch, do it look like we did Nancy, it on don't, purpose. Don't <laughs> you know you can't do nothing. Your mother is a stupid <laughs> Goodbye. Can you please just leave? Goodbye. So you must want me to take this and break your phone, because right. I don't think you want no, me to. No. no. Come on, lady. You already broke the house. Don't break your phone, too. Patty Peoples is the landlord who confronted these two women, and she joins me now. Patty, real quick, how did they get into the home? They broke in. They drilled out the deadbolt and entered the home and then replaced it with a deadbolt that only they had a key to. And that right there was when I lost control was of it. my so property. They, so they broke into your property, took it over, and then said, let the courts figure it out. The, the police didn't say, okay, we're gonna let you back into your house. Absolutely, these squatters know the laws better than most attorneys do. 
and they use them to their advantage. And the police are absolutely hamstrung. Uh, they have, they know that this is a civil matter. The police have absolutely no right to remove these squatters and treat them as criminals, as individuals that have broken in or trespassed. And they simply throw up their hands and say, you need to go through the civil court system and evict them. That can take 30 days, six months, and in some cases, in some cities around this nation, it can take 18 months or more. And in the this is a nationwide problem. And in the meantime, they destroy your house. So let's just say you, you called two of your brothers, an uncle and a, and a buddy who was in the military, and you said, we're gonna go over there and just physically remove the people from the house, not harm them, just remove them from the house and take our house back. Would you be the bad guy? We would be in jail. In fact, I couldn't even turn off the electricity and the water. Uh, we are prevented from doing that. So not only did they uh, steal a home to live in for a period of time, but they lived in, in relative comfort with a washer dryer, which they stole, a uh, fully stocked kitchen uh, with all of the appliances and heat, air conditioning and water. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. 
Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.